stay tuned and let's check out this Marvel Legends The Infinity Saga 2 pack with the Iron Man Mark 21 and Happy Hogan. Pow and welcome back to the channel Dan Who Reviews. As always, my name is Dan W. Make sure you are following me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And remember, you can now hit that join button and become a channel member as well. Quite simply, show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. Today, we are filling a much needed gap in our MCU collection because we are opening the Marvel Legends, Marvel Studios, the Infinity Saga 2 pack with the Iron Man Mark 21. But finally, we are adding Happy Hogan to our MCU displays. Played by the legend that is John Favreau, of course, who has been an integral part of the MCU as he directed the very first Iron Man and he's been Tony Stark's sidekick throughout the films and now has moved on to the Spider-Man franchise as well. So very happy to add Happy Hogan to our MCU displays. Definitely a character that was missing in our collection. And now we're here because this two-pack is technically a two-pack of brand new characters because yes, this is a repaint of a figure we already have but it's one of those repaints that makes sense as it turns it into uh, a new armor which is canon it's part of the house party protocol uh, which is the Midas armor I'm out mark 21 so yeah this is technically a two-pack of brand new characters or at least a representation of a character for our shelf so I'm very happy with that and I can sort of uh, ignore the lack of accessories because of that uh, but yeah there they are happy Hogan the I'm mark 21 from the Iron Man 3 film of course spin it around on the back we get the poster of Iron Man 3 with that iconic set up the Hall of Armor there in front of Tony. And we do get a roll for both characters. So first, Mark 21, codenamed Midas. It's a fully loaded high altitude suit built by Stark that's outfitted with enriched gold titanium alloy. And then we get a writer for Happy Hogan that reads, Stark Industries' a new head of security gets caught in the middle of the battle as Iron Man gears up to face an all new powerful threat which was, of course, the fake Mandarin, as we know now. But uh, yeah, Iron Man 3 uh, sort of, at first, wasn't looked upon very highly, but then people have grew to love it. I love that we get the House Party Protocol, but I just wish we'd seen more of the armors, because, yes, this is in the movie, but if you blink, you miss it. It's that type of vibe. But it's canon. It's, it's still needed for our shelves, so uh, let's get them open. So here we have Happy Hogan and the Midas Armor out of the packaging. As I said, not many accessories. Happy Hogan just comes with this tiny little black cell phone, uh, which I'll zoom in and show you in a minute. And then also the Midas Armor comes with those hands that unfortunately don't have the hinges. We also get some blast effects that we've seen a thousand times before, but no complaints when they're added in. These hands, I just wish they had the hinge in, but at least we get an interchangeable set of hands. So we get a few little accessories, but nothing major. For me, the main thing about this box set is Happy Hogan. So uh, let's Let's start off with him, shall we? As always, let's start off up top and check out this face sculpt. Hasbro always do a great job with this digital face print in tech. And yet again, I think they've done a great job with capturing the likeness of John Favreau's Happy Hogan. So uh, you let me know what you think. I do think in person it looks very nice, but if I remember in post, I'll throw up a nice side by side. And you tell me, does it look like Happy Hogan? Um, I think it does. I think it looks like John Favreau. I think the likeness is dead on with this one. It really does. If you had passed me this figure, I'd be able to tell you who it was uh, without even knowing it was a Marvel Legends. I'd be like, hey, that's John Favreau. Um, so yeah, this is good. This is really nice. And as I said, not only in the Iron Man films now, he's now been a part of the Spider-Man franchise as well. So this can sort of fit in either or sections of your display, which is always uh, appreciated. But other than that, it is just a guy in a suited body, but it's not uh, the same suited body we've seen before. I do think this is a newly sculpted sort of beefier, bulkier body, if you will, a little bit more top heady, a little bit more broad. Uh, so no complaints on that. Uh, if you spin it around, you can see it's just in a black suit, uh, black tie, white shirt, uh, definitely no reuse on here. It does seem like all new parts. As I said, this jacket's a separate piece and you've got the white shirt underneath with the black tie. You've got a little pocket there, but you can't take the jacket off because then you'd have the black jacket sleeves, uh, unfortunately. So yeah, just jacket on. But Happy Hogan's not really seen running around in his shirt. He's always got the suit jacket on, so I'm fine with that. But yeah, this is a sort of a softer plastic piece that sits over the figure. But even still, you can see it's very nice. The collar's quite straight. It's obviously ironed his shirt. You've got the ab crunch in there as well. Uh, and the ab crunch is pretty good. Like, look, at that he will lean forward quite a bit so that's better than most and then back is pretty good as well but it gets hindered with the sort of stiffness of the jacket but it's still there uh, you can also see as well how the separate pieces sort of see the white uh, through 
the jacket there. So that's why if you took the jacket off, you'd have black arms, white shirt. It makes no sense. But still, nice suited body, black trousers, that's right, I'm in the UK, I say trousers, not pants, um, and then you can see his black shoes that have got a bit more gloss on compared to his trousers. There is a belt with a belt buckle, there's a thigh swivel, double jointed knee, which is pretty stiff, but pretty good as well. Like, that's better than some Marvel Legends. So, uh, yeah, double jointed knee is pretty good. Uh, there's an ankle pivot and rocker as well. Um, so it's pretty much standard articulation for a male suited body. Arms won't go up past that, so not even getting to 90, unfortunately. I feel like I'll snap it. There's a swivel at the top of the arm. Double jointed elbows, though. Uh, still got the pins in this suit body, which is a shame since we have that new technology now. But again, not a big deal. They're black pins on the black suit. I'm not even going to notice. Um... And yeah, no pins on the legs though. So that has been given an update. Um, so yeah, there you go. Suited, new, beefier body for Marvel Legends. Uh, they are already reusing this. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do head swaps uh, for Hammerhead. But Hasbro, well, one step ahead of you, they're already giving us a retro Hammerhead on this new, beefier body. So it makes a lot of sense. But it works spot on for John Favreau as well. Uh, so one more time, let's have a little look at that head sculpt. As I said, that's your main event. So there's a, obviously potential here, the head swaps if you want other suited legends. I'm thinking people like Tombstone as well maybe, but the skin tone may be a little bit off. But still, this is a great figure. And as I said, it's more about who he represents, what this figure represents. It represents Happy Hogan, and he's a character we need on our shelf. So I'm happy. Pun intended. His only accessory, as I said, is this tiny little phone. It's got a green and a red button on there. No one on the screen. I can't even read if that says a name. Very thin. This is definitely the type of accessory that the carpet monster will eat. So don't drop it. Uh, but he can hold it, of course. And the pose isn't very natural, let's be honest. But you can still get the phone up to his ear. Or at least you can make it look like he's on loudspeaker and just talking to his phone, maybe. But uh, yeah, again, it's just what else could you have give Happy Hogan, I guess. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, the, a little phone accessory. I'm not complaining about it at all and as I said he can hold it he can grip it nicely and if I give him a shake that's not falling out of his hand either so at least he can stand on the shelf doing something uh, ignoring phone calls from Peter Parker mainly or he's texting Aunt May maybe very sneaky here we have Happy compared to a couple of other Marvel Legends suited bodies. Of course, Tony Stark and then also the young Nick Fury, as technically there are differences between those suited bodies. Uh, but as you can see, uh, Happy Hogan is definitely broader, wider, thicker, bulkier, whatever you want to say. But it makes sense for the character. And if I take uh, young Nick Fury out of the way for a minute, and how do these two sort of line up together on the shelf? Uh, Happy Hogan, is he taller than Robert Downey? I can't remember. Maybe not that much taller. Uh, so I do think the proportions, the scales off a little bit, but again, if you play around with how you've got them displayed or taking pictures, I think you can get it to work. However, we now have a better Robert Downey Jr. head, but it's on that Iron Man Mark 85. Uh, if I have it near me, yes, I do. Here he is. Um, and now he's massive compared to, um, to Happy Hogan. So that is my little criticism about building an MCU collection. Like I love getting new characters and updates, but I have to admit the scale is a little bit skew if and it's hard to stay consistent with the line because uh, that's a little bit all over the place, isn't it? Let's be honest. So um, again, <laughs> it's hard to hide that in a, in a video as well. But uh, yeah, I think this actually works better to be fair, but Happy I don't know, not that tall. Maybe I need to get him to stand on the yellow pages. That's a very UK reference, by the way. And I couldn't forget about Pepper Potts, of course. And I think this scale works a lot better with Happy and Pepper, as I can imagine Happy being a little bit taller than Pepper. So technically, if I move the rescue arm out of the way, this is an Iron Man free setup. But uh, I would love to get Pepper Potts in a more sort of suited, sort of pencil skirt, sort of blazer type outfit, uh, as she is the new CEO of Stark Industries, uh, because I doubt she's walking around the office Offices, uh, like this constantly but it's still nice to know we are getting all these characters in figure form and as I said if we bring Tony in here as well then there you go that's an iconic trio from the MCU isn't it so um happy that we've got all these on the shelf represented in some form just scales and outfits a little bit off and for our last Happy Hogan comparison, I had to bring in Tom Holland's Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. I think this is the brand new Walmart exclusive Spider-Man as well with that updated Tom Holland head. And this looks very nice as well. Makes a lot of sense. Tony Stark uh, appeared in the first Spider-Man. So did Happy Hogan. And then since then, Happy Hogan has appeared in all of the Spider-Man movies. So this will definitely make sense on a shelf, on a display as well. And looks great.
So let's look at this Mitus armor, aka the Iron Man Mark 21. Now this is technically a canon armor. It's one of those blink and you'll miss it within the movie, but I promise you it's canon within the MCU. Google it, it's an all gold armor. And for our Legends format, it's essentially a straight up repaint of the Mark 7 from the 10th anniversary line. And if I bring that in, you'll see what I mean. It's the same figure, just repainted in this sort of gold color. But it's a, a bit more color detail than you think. It's not all just one color. There are a few different shades of that sort of metallic gold in there. And I will zoom in and take a closer look, but I just wanted to show you side by side, it is the Mark 7, but it's a repaint that makes sense. So no complaints from me, but yeah, all the way around the same mold, same everything. Even on the back, this one had the wings uh, that sort of go up like that. Um, and so does this one, uh, so does this one. So let me uh, get them up, hopefully they don't fall over on me and uh, you'll see for yourself exactly the same figure from either side um, all the way around. And this is a great armor as well. So this repainting whatever colors you want if it's canon for the MCU. Uh, so yeah, this Mightus armor makes a lot of sense, but let's zoom in and take a close look. But I did want to show you, if you have the Mark VII, you know what you're getting yourself in for. It's a great Iron Man armor and uh, another one for the display. So as I said, taking a closer look as the light hits it, you'll be able to see the different shades of gold and sort of bronze, if you will, uh, a little bit, sort of a darker gold. We've got the white art reactor with a little bit of blue around it and we've got a nice face paint. I like the silhouette on that with the white eyes. A little bit of chrome there on the top of the body. Uh, move it around to the side and you can start to see these different shades of gold. Darker elbows and shoulders compared to the forearms that are more goldish. On the back, uh, if we lift them up, again, all articulate upwards, all looking very nice. Uh, again, a bit more gold there, a bit more bronzy. Uh, definitely more bronze on the sort of torso area compared to the sort of crotch piece. Spin it around to the side. Again, depending on how the light hits it, a little bit more silver there in between the knees. And again, you can see the silver on the back. And again, the double joint is very nice for an Iron Man armor. Um, nice range on the ankle pivot as well. Oh, look at that, people. That's beautiful, beautiful. Um, Again, on the elbow, you can see a little bit of chrome coming through. And again, different. So as the light hits it, you definitely see different shades, different tones, but it's a nice sort of gold and uh, will definitely hit the light right and stand out in the display. And as I said, it makes sense. It's a, it's a, a canon armor for our MCU. And, uh, and when it comes to Spider-Man characters with the with the, your Spider-Verse or Iron Man with a Hall of Armor, it definitely makes sense to get more of these figures and it just makes for a more epic display. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with this. He does come with his fisted hands on there, uh, but we do get a set of Repulsa blasting hands and yes we've seen these a million times before but let's be honest they still look good uh, on a shelf it makes the display a little bit more dynamic the disappointing thing about these particular hands are though they have no hinge so he's constantly got on flat palmed like that well, he looks great if you want to pose him this way or if you want to get him in a flying pose obviously you're going to have to put him like that but otherwise there's no hinge in the hands so you can't really hinge it any other way it's literally stuck in that same pose and even without the blast effects in they've got the little hole uh, and then these blast effects are separate and of course you can also use them on the peg holes on the feet as well so you have options never complain about options uh, but yeah I just wish those hands had hinges that's my gripe so I think I will show you my Hall of Armour again but first let's just do a couple of comparisons on the table and you can see we've got the same Mark 7 armour there and then we've got the brand new Mark 3 armour that we recently got in this Infinity Saga lineup as well and again these Iron Man armours look great here we have the Mitus armor compared to both versions of the Mark 85, one with, of course, that new Tony Stark head sculpt. And I know technically these are both Gamerverse armors. However, I do think you can put them in a Hall of Armor display. Why not? They look great, they're different colors, they stand out compared to the red and gold ones. And uh, yeah, again, if you're building a M MCU Hall of Armor, you can definitely use these two in it. And I'll show you what I mean. When given the opportunity, I do like to show off my Hall of Armour, but if you have been following the channel for any amount of time, you know I had this in my old little flat. I built it on a shelf and then it came with me to the new house, but it's in desperate need of an expansion as I've run out of pods a long time ago and now we've just got armors all over the place. Uh, but yeah, it's still my pride and joy on my shelf. And uh, we've got the Tony Stark in the middle there, surrounded by armors. We've got the Mark 44 Hulkbuster back there. 
the Mark 43 from Iron Man 3 on that sofa. That's where Happy's going to stand for now. The very undersized Mark 1, that's in desperate need for an upgrade, which I don't think will happen anytime soon, unfortunately. The Game of Verse armors fit in nicely there, just outside the pods with the hot rod. Mark 42, the black and gold. Spin it around over here, and we've got the Iron Patriot, the War Machine, the Disco Armor, and then some war, uh, armors from uh, the recent Endgame, even though that War Machine's only concept art. But still, I love this section of the display but it's in desperate need of an upgrade. But for now, Happy's there in the corner. We've got the Mightus Armour up there, standing next to the Mark Seven. Again, a bit dark in that corner. But yeah, my MCU shelves need a sorting out. Uh, but yeah, you know, if you've seen my room, you've seen the collection. Um, it's I'm constantly making a mess of it, doing reviews and stuff, but still, I love this section, and there you go. So let's wrap this up with some final thoughts. I think this is a solid two pack. Let's be honest, two brand new characters technically for the collection and display. Very happy to finally have Happy Hogan. I keep saying that unintentionally, but yes, pun intended. Uh, he's a character that we have needed for the collection since the very beginning. He was in the debut of the MCU. John Favreau, the actor who plays Happy Hogan, directed that first movie, for God's sake. He kicked off the MCU. We needed him on the shaft just as much as we needed Stan Lee. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that as he fits in with this collection as well. Like He will fit in with the modern day Spider-Man as well as the older Iron Man figures. And uh, yeah, definitely needed him represented in plastic for the shaft. But you let me know what you you think in the comments below, did we need Happy Hogan for an MCU display? Was he essential? Let me know. My answer is a yes, of course he was. But let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like Marvel Legends, and if you think I should do a whole video on my Hall of Armor or display, let me know. But until then, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Much, much appreciated. You can also hit that join button and become a channel member, either show some love or join the members club. Much, much appreciated. You can follow me on Instagram at it's Dan Who. And you can tweet me as well. I'm on Twitter at Dan Who Reviews. And until then, people, my name is Dan W. And I'm very happy. And I shall see you on the next one.